Hello there. Good morning and welcome to my little arty corner of the internet. I say good morning because it is morning here, in, here in the world where I live, um, in South Wales in the United Kingdom. Um, but good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be when you're watching this. It's lovely to have you join me. And um, thank you for all the subscriptions. And thank you as well for all the lovely messages um, left on my whimsical cat's flip through. I'm so glad that you, um, you seem to like it as much as I enjoyed making it. So thank you very much for that. It's Thursday today, it is the 10th of February and um, I need to get my colouring template for um, the Angela Porter's Colouring Book Fans Facebook group done. Um, pretty sharpish as I've got something to do this afternoon and I'd like to get this um, in the bag as it were um, sooner rather than later. So what I'm doing here is I am just actually that wouldn't make sense to anybody so I'll delete that one but um, I'm just going to complete this one and then all of that image that's full of all Doodle World um, characters that I did a couple of days ago that'll make the other half of the template. So all a bit of fun. I'm using fountain pens, continuing to use fountain pens. Um, here I've got my Pilot um, Kakuno, the medium tipped one, because, um, well, because my Schaefer, the one that I was using yesterday, is seriously playing up um, as far as Um, pen ink flow is going so I think it needs a serious clean out. This pen's a little bit on the finer side compared to what I was using but that's fine. It happens. It happens with fine liner pens as I use them because the tips get, um, as you use them and they get worn, they do tend to flare out and become broader so it's fine. The major difference is the ink in this pen isn't the document ink. But I'm fine with that because I'm not going to add colour to this this drawing. So um, I really wanted to make this more of a Doodle Worlds kind of, not Doodle Worlds, but a little bit more entangled um, patterns and features in. And to do that, I'm going to use arches to join the various design elements but to leave some open space for other stuff to go in there. Um, and I think they are joining them rather than going behind them. So that if, you know, if we had a doodle world critter that was living up here and it wanted to walk, it would walk to here and perhaps up and over and, you know, along or jump down because they're annoying critters. They get everywhere they do. So how are you doing? I hope you're all doing fine and well. Um, I'm okay here, you know, it's pottering on, as you do, as one does with life. Um, I wasn't sure whether I'd be able to make a video today, because I had arranged to, for the first time, to go and visit a friend um, who needs some help, but um, they've had a notification they went away um, last week or you know not long ago and they had a notification to say that somebody on their plane had tested positive for Covid so they've got to isolate for seven days so I get to do video because I wasn't capable of getting up early this morning because I was up until late last night um, it was after a meditation meeting I went to I was chatting with some of the, the people there until rather late, and I do mean rather late. So there was absolutely, you know, I say rather late, rather late, and then I needed a drink and something to eat, so I was up until way too late last night. But that was fine again. It was lovely. It's always lovely when I get back. It's always lovely to communicate with people. I have been meaning to set up another Zoom get-together for the members of the Facebook group 
or anybody else, I guess, who'd like to come along and say hello to me and have a chat and ask questions live. Um, so it's something I do need to have a look at and consider sometime soon in the future. So behind this one, I am going to pop in the Zentangle style pattern. I don't even know if this is one of them. There's so many tangle patterns out, it's hard to keep track of them all. And I'm sure there's a fair number that I haven't yet seen. Especially when I think the tendency is for us to focus on our favourites. That's what I tend to do anyway. So that works quite nicely there. I don't think I want to put anything else in there because I think the background would then become a bit too busy for what we've got there. But it's just something a bit different to fill some space in. Okay, I've got these lovely plants here with these sprouts in. Um, and I've got some Doodly Wills characters hiding down here. So let's put some other plants in, I think. Oh blimey, the, um, there's a helicopter around and about here. Don't know who that would be, whether it's the emergency services of one kind or another, or whether it's somebody surveying because there's all kinds of stuff going on. So here I'm going to do a different kind of flower than I think you've seen with me. It's sort of, you know, a weird mushroom meets flower, but it is, I do want it to be more flowery, but a more of an abstracty, imaginative kind of thing. Because, well, my saying, because I can. And actually, because I think it's quite fun to use more imaginative things in art. I do. And it plays well with the Doodle Worlds critters because they're all quite imaginary. imaginary. Or they are based, like the mushrooms are based on real life things. And a couple of the others are, but they've got the cute smiley faces. Or kawaii, if you prefer. Or cute and whimsical but I did say with this one I, I wanted to throw in some things that are perhaps um, more zentangle or in entangled which is what I call my style of art the intricates interwoven kinds of things that I do I suppose and um, sneak some of these Doodle Worlds characters in. I think I'm trying to work out the balance of Doodle Worlds characters compared to the other things that I will pop in to my art, like these flowers and so on, because um, as much as I like the page, it's got nearly all Doodle World's characters in. It's very similar, you know, there's a lot of people doing that kind of work. And it, although it's fun and it is sort of me, it's great fun for me to do as something that's a bit of a change. I think I need to combine the two. And doing things like this is my way of combining those two. So... And of course, I think they're going to be a lot of fun to add colour to, particularly as they aren't meant to be particularly representative of anything that is actually existing, although they may be based on existing things. I just think it's fun to create things that are just that a bit... Um, bit step back from that and then it allows you to use your imagination as far as colour goes to bring them to life in your own way 
and I like the idea of freeing people up from oh this is a tree it must be green no autumn autumn trees are all kinds of colors um, and I think in in your imaginary world if you want to populate a world with pink trees and a purple sky and a lime green sun well why not it's your world it's your imagination it's the use of your creativity and i think that is as valid as anything else these ideas that sky has to be blue um you know stem from our early years education where we're told that that we have to put the sky at the top of the page and the sun is always up there and it's round and yellow and yet as you go through life you realize that the sun isn't always yellow and it isn't always round if it's hidden behind a cloud it's not round you can see part of it and the effects of light in the sky can cause the sun to change as you know the light becomes bent or refracted through the sky um, depending on atmospheric conditions and skies night skies aren't always black in fact they're not black they they're from shades of very very dark blue right down to a lighter blue but then you get the aurora borealis which paints that night sky with the most amazing colors and shifts in patterns and i just think that children before they are told that the sky is blue and you have to color inside the lines have this natural kind of creativity and enthusiasm for things and they're they paint things in the way they want to paint things and what i think i'd like to encourage people to do as far as coloring books or coloring sheets go or even their own art is go with what colors you want be that carefree child again and perhaps that is part of the appeal of colouring books. Um, is to take it helps to take us back to that innocence. If it's a colouring book or your colouring pages that allow you to do that. Um, and it gives us a chance to be creative, it gives you the framework of an image. Because how many of you had your, your confidence in art dashed at school when you were told you can't draw, you can't do art? Oh shoot, I've managed to smudge a part here really dreadfully. Oh darn it. It's okay, I can clean that up digitally. Look, don't you? And I'm using paper to smudge up damp pink. I must have twisted it and smeared it. Oh well such is life. It's going to be, it is what it is, time again. And all I can say is thank goodness for digital art packages. I use Clip Studio Paint these days. I found, and I had to switch because I absolutely loved Autodesk um, sketchbook and I used the pro version and it was just so intuitive it worked so much like drawing with pen on paper and the tools were easy to understand and they did just about everything I needed them to do and they did an awful lot more but um, Autodesk suddenly decided that the pro wasn't available anymore I don't know if I had a notification about that. I don't remember having a notification to say they were going to do that. That you could use the free version, but the free version isn't as nice to use in some ways. It's it's great, but it's it, it's it's just different. I thought, well, perhaps that's a sign that I need to have a look at changing what software package I used. So I had to look around. I looked at different things. I tried things. Oh, Coral Paint I downloaded and, I, and it refused to work. It was so slow and clunky and horrible that I thought, I can't do this. There was no way I was going to use Photoshop. I tried Photoshop before and I really don't like, I, I don't understand Adobe products. Um, 
I, t I had a look at Krita, Krita years ago and it was too much like Photoshop for me to um, to understand. And I gather it's come along in leaps and bounds and it is free software, you know. Um, but I, I saw Clip Studio Paint and I read about it, I read reviews and I thought, okay, I'll give this a go. So I downloaded the free trial and its interface is very similar to Photoshop. Perhaps I've come along through using um, things like the Affinity packages um, and got a better understanding of the interfaces. Um, but it seemed to click with me more than Photoshop did. And also Photoshop was designed for working with photos, with images, photographic images, as an editor for photos. Um, and it became used for doing art in, even though it wasn't specifically designed for that. Whereas Clip Studio Paint is designed for artists. Manga in particular, but in my opinion, any artist. And it just seemed to make more sense and seemed to work for me better. And it, you do pay for it, but it is a one-off payment like the Affinity products from Serif. And so once you've paid, that's it. You have that product for life. And you get all the updates and everything. So that is fantastic. And of course with Photoshop and it's kind, you have to pay a monthly fee. And you know, a couple of you know, just a couple of months fees and Photoshop will have paid for Clip Studio. And um especially if you wait and you know, you find it on special offer because they regularly have it available at a discount price. As I'm doing this, my um, my computer is happily downloading the latest release or the, the updates to Clip Studio Paint so that I get to use that um, when I when I'm editing this and cleaning this up. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you know what's new. I think it's just little tweaks. So how did I get onto this? I've lost my train of thought now. Oh, I think it's because I said, "Oh, digital art's marvellous." And they have versions of it for you know Windows and for you know Apple products, Mac. Um, but also you have versions or that can run on phones and tablets as well. And today they've released um, an app for the for Samsung products, where your phone can be like a extra pad that will work with the full version of Clip Studio Paint, so that it can it's like a touchpad for functions and options, so you don't have to go to your key keyboard. Not that I use my keyboard. So that sounds quite funky. I don't have a Samsung phone or a tablet, but um, the helicopter's still buzzing around. So I don't know who they are or what they're doing, but they're definitely buzzing around here. So, so yeah. So you know, there's there's, there's innovative ideas like that. I've got no idea if that's been done by Adobe or Photoshop. No idea. Okay, so what can I do in this one? I think underneath here I might just put some slightly wobbly lines in. A different kind of background pattern. This is my equivalent of white space, by the way. I've got big areas. 
I'm not going to fill it in with dense, dense patterns, but I'm certainly going to keep some of it a bit more open. Okay, I think it's time to add some other critters almost in here. But before that, I am going to add a flower in. So I don't want the petals to touch that um, ring. I want to have a, a bigger space here. So I've put my little tick marks in where I want the centre of the petals to be. And, you know, like short lines, tick marks. And I'll leave them there as if they're little folds in the petals. Add a couple of little dots on the top. And that's quite nice. So that, that helps to even this up a little bit. So I'm going to think about what am I going to pop in here? Ooh, it's some kind of container. So let's have a look. Give this a bit of a cheeky face. How many have I got sticking their tongues out here? Not many. If any, I have at least one sticking its tongue out because they are cheeky creatures. Because if you're going to draw along with me or going to use these ideas, these faces are completely, you know, adaptable. You change the expression if you wish, it's not a problem. So I think what I'm going to pop in here is I'm going to pop this full of pens, pencils, brushes, perhaps. Bear in mind as well that when you are adding colour to images like this, oh look I've gone and done it again, I'm having a smudgy smudgy day today, not happy for myself because it means a fair amount of time needs to be spent on cleaning this up. You don't have to stay inside the lines so you can actually colour the whole of a um, the whole of something in the same colour and let the lines do the work for you. There you go. So there's a pot of pencils. I put a ruler in there because I do use rulers from time to time just to outline various things. This year I put a curved line in, then straight lines down. And once I'd filled inside this pot, I've curved these around and coloured it in black as if to give it a um, To give it that feeling that it's it's a it's a it's a hollow vessel that's got volume to it, so that's quite fun. Okie dokes. I was talking about mobile phones, so shall we pop something in that looks vaguely like one? And there's the screen. I always draw that in as an indication that we've got glass there. So I think it looks like vaguely like a mobile phone. You can't see the buttons at the bottom. That's if they have buttons at the bottom. Mine doesn't. It's, it's got a, almost completely a screen and it's a touch thing at the bottom, which shows up when you, you, know, you touch it or the side buttons and things. Um, okay, so we've got some non-crittery doodly stuff and I think I might just pop in and have a look because so I've got my my books full of patterns here doodle patterns and stuff 
So let's have a look at something else I could just pop in that's a kind of fillery kind of thing. Okay, I think I will pop a critter in here because this space is awkward to put something in and I'm trying to, I was hoping to keep things a bit on the bigger side here but we'll see. Um, so yeah, um, let's have it looking towards these. And a lovely expression on its face. As it is, so like in surprise, I haven't left the white dots in there, but I will pop them in at some point going forward. Okay, let me just open this out a bit. That might work a bit better. Oh, we're getting sunlight coming in. Pop that, do that. Still got lots of sunlight. There we go. That'll help a bit. <laughs> more consistent light I hadn't realised. I get so engrossed in art that I forget about such things. I'm terrible for it. Okay, um, I think we're coming up to Valentine's Day. So I think what I'm going to do here, I think I'm going to draw a lovely big heart. And I'm going to give the heart wings. Can I do this? That'll work fine, I'm sure. They're not going to be necessarily identical wings, but they'll do. So we've got a lovely heart there. Just need to do some weighting there and some weighting here. Put some on the underneath the wings. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Oh, I did get the same number of sections. That's cool. Just a little bit there. And then we shall give the heart a happy smug face. Well, I say smug, just a happy face. There we go. And um, oh, I might, in my head, I had an idea for something else, but for the life of me, I can't think what it was. That's okay, that works. Oh, I know what it was. I was going to put some lettering in, like love. Right, let me just cap my pen. Move this up a bit. And I'm going to put an arch over here. Like so, and, oops. I can get it like this and let's see if I can split it into four equal you know sort of like sections that'll be okay if I adjust that slightly that would be fine there, perhaps a bit closer and perhaps make that a bit thicker like this one, that would be fun, something a bit different from me. And the lettering is not perfect, but I'm not a perfect letterer and letterer. 
and I don't think you need to be necessarily for something like this. We have my guides here to help me, my pencil guides. And if it's a big, bit wonky, that's fine. And I'm going to pop underneath it, draw in some pencil guidelines. Love you. And I'm just going to pop this in. in that is like this where I'm going to just darken one side there we are so there wasn't enough space to do that and I'm not going to put I love you but just love you there we are so that adds to that Halloween Halloween yeah Valentine's Day <laughs> Halloween oh yeah let's let's go for it I think I could have a drunken party skull here because it's never too early for spooky things as far as I'm concerned give it a nose it's a bit like an up down heart I'm going to pop some hearts in its eyes instead of um, the usual dots or whatever and I think I'm going to put a speech bubble there which isn't very even but I'll sculpt that line out to make it look a bit better perhaps and we've got a, a message of love from my drunken party skull. There we go. Because Halloween creatures can love as well. If skulls are Halloween creatures, well, they exist in my world here. And I've gone and smudged there. What a surprise. I think I'm going to switch to my twisby excuse my arm going across so this has got the document ink in that actually well, remember that's why i don't use these fountain pens too often because they the ink does take a while to dry and it smudges okay so this document ink does dry a bit quicker It'll take me a while to clean this up, I can live with that. Dog. Rabbit, whatever you'd like this one to be, choice is yours. Very fluffy dog, or a very fluffy rabbit with not only fluffy ears, either works. And um, I think it's time for me to pop another arch in somewhere. That'd work nicely, as will that. I can pop a couple more little characters in here, I think. This one's barely looking above that arch underneath. It's very it's sweet and innocent face, so let's give it a little hair on the top. Sometimes you see this in cartoons, don't you? That one hair to suggest we've got a baby of some kind. Actually, I think what I might do is just pop a little sprout growing out of it. Ties in then with these over here. Have I done that already somewhere? Yeah, I did it down there with a grumpy one. And then... Strange shape. But that's okay. A 
little bit shocked. So, having fun. I hope all of this has given you some ideas for things that you can use. I'm going to carry on drawing this off camera. Um, because I've, I'll have a lot of cleaning up to do as well. So as I talk, I don't work as quickly as I would do. And I, I consciously try to slow myself down so that you have a chance to follow. So let me just move that down so you can see it all. So the full version, the finished version, um, co combined with the other drawing of all the um, Doodle World's critters I've done, will be around on social media later today. And I will also put an image in the in the community section for my for this channel. So um, I've now got to remember to do that in my postings um, when I do something or add to it. So do take care of yourselves, find time to be creative, and I'll see you again soon. Take care for now. Bye bye.